dashboards there are various ways uh, wherein you could create dashboards in excel the first one and the simplest one is that you could use different pivot charts with slicers so it makes it interactive you could you know set different filters and based on that the charts will be modified that could be one way the other way could be that you create different kinds of charts from the same set of data and you could modify the data and based on that the chart will change its values and it will be updated the third way that i will talk about here is making interactive dashboards using google data studio so data studio is a free service which allows easy connection to various sources of data dashboards and reports can be quickly created and shared with individuals and teams okay so the link to the data studio is mentioned here and you'll find it below the video okay click on the link log in with your google account and you will have access to the data studio right so before starting with the data studio i would like to show you what kind of data that i have and how i want to you know take it to the data studio and create the interactive dashboard so for that i will open another template file which is an import file for the data studio so this is the file which i will use for creating an interactive dashboard it has three columns year sales for product one sales for product two so different years different sales figures okay i'll be creating an interactive dashboard from this data okay so the first step that we have to do is that we have to go to google sheets and put the data there okay import that data there reason being that google data studio will import that data from the google sheets okay so what i'll do is i'll open my google sheets okay so the link for google sheets is mentioned below okay. click on it sign in with your google account and you will see this kind of an interface here click on this plus sign which says start a new spreadsheet this is a blank spreadsheet as soon as you will click here you'll find that an untitled spreadsheet is created so now there are two ways how you can bring that data from that excel sheet to the google sheet first i can copy the entire data okay select the cell and paste the data here okay so that's one way by which i can get the data the second way is that i will go to this file menu and then click on import and here it will give me an option to import the file from my drive so you could import the file from your system and you select the particular file and that data will be imported okay so you could do either ways i think copying and pasting is also very quick and easy so i got my data inside the google sheets and i will just re name this spreadsheet to test pod file okay so give it a name okay and these are automatically saved now i will go to the google data studio so for this you will get the link below the video click on the link sign in with your google account if you've already done for google sheets then you don't require a sign in and you will get this kind of an interface here again you have to click on the blank report okay so this plus sign here and you will see that an interface for the dashboard will appear now before starting of creation of a dashboard the data studio will always ask to add data to the report so there are different ways by which you know you could add the data there are a lot of things mentioned to keep it simple we'll import the data from google sheets so i will click on google sheets here okay and here if you go to the section which says owned by me okay, you will find all the google sheets that you have you know on your google sheet account and here you see this is the one that i saved which is the test import file i click on that it will show worksheet one and then i'll click on add Okay, so now I find that my table that was there in the Google Sheets is available here, but it shows something different. It shows the first column for the years and here it shows record count. Okay, so let's try to understand what this is. If you see on the right side, we have two things, a dimension and a metric. Okay, so year is an dimension here and in the metric we see it is record count, right? So if we do not want a record count, we could remove it. So there is no metric at the moment and here available fields you can see are sales p1 sales p2 right or we could click on the add metric and here we can select sales p1 so as soon as we do that we see that the sales p1 values appear so the data is already stored in the background in the data studio it just has to be displayed the way you want right similarly i click here again to the plus sign and select sales p2 okay so now my table is complete and i have the entire data for the year the sales p1 and sales p2 okay you could adjust the formatting as per our requirement 
Okay. Now this, what we see is the raw data. It is up to us whether we want to, you know, show the complete data like the, in the form of a table here or not. And it says one to 12 of 12. So if we increase it further, we'll see the complete 12 rows here now. Okay. And here we can select different themes. Okay. So you could take a darker theme or something like groovy or something from here. Okay. So there are different types of themes which are available. Let's select one of the themes. So as soon as I do that, I see that this thing changes okay and now we are going to add charts to this dashboard to do that you will see that there are a lot of options which are available on the top okay and one of them is add a chart so there are different types of charts which are available that could come here so let me take a column chart and can drag and place it like this okay now once you put the chart you will find that the data is not you know coming as it is mentioned here because the metric is record count again so by default the metric is record count so here what we'll do is we'll go to add metric and add sales p1 and now you see that the sales for p1 has been added we will remove the record count okay so these are the sales for the p1 if you also want to see the sales of p2 in the same chart you could add sales p2 or you could make make a separate chart right so if you make sales p2 so the sales p2 appears here and that's in a different color right so that's the way you can create and customize your chart you always have to play with the dimension and the metric another thing what i want to show you here is if you go to this sort field here you can sort the things in descending or ascending orders right so at the moment it is set to descending based on the sales of p1 right but maybe we want years to be sorted in the descending or the ascending order so what we can do we can click here and select year right so now the years are in descending order from 2021 till 2012 right so these are 10 datas but our data is until 2010 until the year 2010 but we see 10 fields here so for this you have to make another setting if the data is too large then you can go to the style of the chart and here you have an option to increase the number of bars so we make it 12 now okay and as soon as we do that you see now the data till 2010 year appears okay so everything is now a matter of customization and how you want to look the data right so we have made the sorting based on the year in the descending order if you want it the other way around you want to do it ascending then it starts from 2010 and goes till 2021 okay so that's the way the chart will appear now next what we'll do is we'll go to add control and here we'll add a drop down list okay so now i will place this drop down list here so you see in the control field it automatically takes up year you could also go with sales p1 and sales p2 but for me the year is fine at the moment and the metric here is a record count so i'll click on the view button what we see on the top and let's see what does it display so the year now displays the various years and we could select or unselect some of the years so for example i want to unselect some of the years okay so if i do that you see the data is changed in the table okay so 2012 and 14 are not here now and also the data is changed here so these two years are not available here right so based on what selections we make both the things also change dynamically so that's the way the dashboard works so based on the filtrations you could you know change this kind of you know the chart as well as the data also we see a record count here if we don't want to see that record count we can go back to the edit field here click on the field and remove the record count so now what will happen is if i go to view again it will only show me the years okay so all the years will be shown here okay let's go back to the edit mode and select this so now if you click on this tab which is called styling here you could play around with the text the header the check boxes the label the background and the border colors right so there are a lot of things by which you can style this drop down box okay now let's try to add another thing let's go to the add control here and let's add a slider okay so i'll put a slider here okay and here it says specify a field control field now i want to specify the control field as sales p1 okay so as soon as i do that you see that the sales for the p1 are appearing here so 1452 is the minimum sale and 9744 is the maximum sale okay now when i go to the view menu and let's say i want to see the sales between 
two particular values okay so let's say between 4200 to 5300 when these amount of sales are, like in which years they were done then only these two years are there 2015 and 2018 so you see when i change this slider values the effective line chart also changes and also this data also changes right similarly you could create a sales for p2 and you could you know actually see if you had any sales between 2300 or 3200 so it shows none right so you could play around with different parameters and see like in what years you had what kind of sales right so i'll go back to the edit mode again so you could add different types of controls and see what effect it does have on your representation based on what you require on your dashboard okay in the charts we have another thing which is called a scorecard so which shows us the total value so if i select this scorecard and place it here so it shows me the total sales for p1 okay because the metric here is selected as p1 if i select another one and set it here then it shows me record count in the metric but i could change it to sales p2 so the total sales of p1 and p2 will be shown here okay so maybe let me move these to here this side okay and go to the view again so now for example i want to see the sales of product p1 in one particular year okay or let's say i want to remove some years okay so based on that you see the sales figures also change right so these years have been excluded right so you see everything which is here on the dashboard is interconnected and if one thing changes then the other things also change that's the way the interactive dashboard will work going back to the edit mode again so you can try a lot of options here which are on the top so you could add images you could add a url you could add some text you could add some lines you could add some shapes right so there are a lot of things that you could you know put in here to beautify your dashboard now let's first see how to rename this report so if you click on the top here you could you know give it a name let's say test dashboard or sales figures whatever you want to you know call it okay and this name gets saved also now i'll show you what are the different type of sharing options that are available so if you click on the share you could invite people to see this dashboard you could schedule an email delivery you could get this report link and share it with other people you could embed it as a report or you could download it as a pdf right so there are a lot of options which are available if you click on the invite people so now here you can add different email addresses and also give them the possibility to either view or edit rights okay so if you want to give a presentation you could only share it with people and give them rights to view or if you want the other people to edit the data and play around with your data you can also give them edit rights right so that the that's the way how you can add people here in the manage access you can you know set the link sharing to off prevent the editors from changing access and adding new people and disable downloading printing and copying of viewers right so you can play with all these selections to make your data more secure right so that's the way you could use this dashboard in a presentation or you could send it across via a link via email or you know just take a pdf report out of it and send it for viewing so all this can be done using this interactive dashboard right so it is up to you how you want to use different kinds of themes different kinds of elements everything is available in this data studio and you can just combine all those features to get your desired dashboard.